Relativity special and general. Ooh, I'm impressed, but do you really need an airplane? Yep, and a £40,000 clock. So for most of us, the way that we experience time is pretty simple. One thing happens after another. So if there's a picture of me flipping a coin in my living room at this particular moment in time, then there's going to be a picture of me flipping a coin on every television that's tuned into BBC One. Time never flows backwards, nor does it speed up. At least, that's what we thought until Albert Einstein came along. And then all of a sudden, time became, well, relative. In 1905, he wrote his special theory of relativity, which said if you travel very fast relative to somebody else, you'll end up younger than them. And to understand what I mean, I want you to come and have a look at my new car. I'm going to accelerate to almost the speed of light. When I get there, things will seem pretty normal to me. My watch will still tick, and every 60 seconds, I'll be a minute older. I'm 39 years, 10 months, and 17 days old. It is 10 past 7 p.m. exactly. But compared to my relatively stationary friends back home, my time would slow down, and that's called time dilation. In other words, they would get older whilst I was away. Right now, we're just going to find the warp button, which should accelerate me close to the speed of... <laughs> now, if I drove at 0.999% of the speed of light for eight hours and then arrived back at my house, I'd discover something rather odd would have happened. My watch is telling me it's eight hours later and I would indeed be eight hours older. But things back home would be very different relative to the time frame I had just travelled in. Relative to my near light speed car journey, time back here at home would have moved forward not by a few hours, but by about a week. My time had slowed because I'd been travelling really, really quickly relative to people back home. Now, you might have thought that this bombshell would have made Einstein very, very happy, but ten years after he'd been messing with time with his special theory of relativity, he was doing it again with his general theory of relativity. This new theory took into account the effect of gravity on time, and it said, for example, that time is actually going to run slower for somebody who's, say, standing on the surface of the Earth where there's lots of gravity relative to, say, somebody who's floating around on a spaceship where there's hardly any gravity at all. Now, you may think that this just sounds absolutely bonkers, but, for example, the satellites that control your car sat-nav wouldn't be able to work without taking relativity into account. To prove that this is more than just science fiction, I'm going to do an experiment that hasn't been done in a very long time. I'm going to try and experience the effects of special relativity by speeding up as close to the speed of light as I can and general relativity by leaving the surface of the planet. I'm about to meet a real Time Lord. And to help me, I'm going to borrow a clock off a real Time Lord. Hi, Dallas. Hi. Come in. Are you set now? Yes. Nice to meet you. I'm Dallas. Yes. Hi. Can yes. I... Um, what, what, what have we got here? What's all this... Uh, what's all your kit? OK, well... All of this is where UK's uh, time is generated. So, Seth, let, let me get this straight. All this gubbins here, this is, this is the correct time. Time doesn't get any more correct than this. The speaking clock calls you up, the BBC pips call you up to get the correct time, and that's it. Uh, uh, absolutely. If two of those cesium clocks remained in this room for the next four billion years, they'd be less than one second out of sync. But Satnam is going to lend me one of them to fly right around the world in less than four days. So if Einstein's theory of general and special relativity are correct, when I get back, my clock will have changed relative to the clock that stayed in this room. How big would that time dilation effect actually be? OK, Dallas, well, according to my calculations, this is the special term, which is that. This is the general relativistic time.
OK, so special relativity, the faster I go, the slower time is going to go. Yes, relative to the clock left on the ground. OK, and general relativity, the further away I am from, from a massive object like a planet, the faster time is going to go. That's right. So which one of these is going to have the biggest effect on our time dilation experiment? The bigger effect um, actually occurs due to the general relativistic effect. I think I get it. I think I get it. Yes, and according to my calculations, if the airborne clock travels at 540 miles per hour at an altitude of 33,000 feet, then the clock and everything on board the aircraft, including yourself, should have aged by an extra 245 nanoseconds. 245 nanoseconds, that's 245 billionths of a second. So that's not a, it's not a whole lot, but it's... it's the uh... time it takes light to travel just one foot. So one, so that's a billionth of a second yes. from there to there? Pretty much. Size 10. OK, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be ageing if I did this. Yes, you'll actually be ageing. OK, pack moisturiser. In one sense, this is a very simple experiment. All I've got to do is check in on a flight to New Zealand and then come back. Passport, ticket, atomic clock. But on the other hand, this clock is not really designed as hand luggage, and it costs 40 grand. No pressure, then. Hi, Dan. Now, if anyone tells you that international air travel is glamorous, try 46 hours on a plane, and despite the excellent service, the boredom soon kicks in. The flying bit was actually fine, even though an atomic clock is a less than talkative travelling companion. Hi there, I'm Dallas. How you doing? Thank you. But every time I had to change planes, the clock had to be switched to its emergency batteries. Let's go. We've got to, we've got to get a plug for this. Which meant that if I didn't find a plug soon, time would run out. So, literally. So we have to go from 115. Where's the actual thing for doing it? This is the most stressful thing I've ever done on Bang. This clock is high maintenance. It's worse than travelling with a small child. Hi. Did you enjoy having the clock on board? Oh, did we ever? <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you that grey, dull Heathrow has never been so welcoming. All I've got to do is get back to the National Physical Laboratory. Oh, Christ, what have I done? Resync the clock and see if there's been any time difference. OK, source yeah. AC. Blimey, OK, I can reveal that that entire flight took 44 hours and 48 minutes, which means I am the fastest person ever to circumnavigate the globe travelling west <laughs> in a commercial airline. Well done, Dallas. Oh, thank you. You're We're very so proud of you. He's completely amazing. He is amazing. Yeah. But, but <laughs> yeah. did you prove the theory? I absolutely proved the theory. Not that it needed proving. I am categorically 230 nanoseconds older by taking that flight than I would have been if I'd stayed on the ground. I hate to break it How to you, that? but it kind of shows around the eyes. Watch it. Watch it. Oh, here's a little chestnut for you. OK, now, I put...